Hey guys, Grant from Four Wheeling in New South Wales. Just done a run here Saturday morning. Um, got up nice and early and we've done a run up here to Capity Valley, uh, other side of Lithgow. Unreal spot, absolutely beautiful. You can see the massive escarpment behind us here. This is the back of the Capity Valley, which you can see down through here. And it runs on the other side of this huge escarpment. The uh, Capity Valley is actually the second largest valley in the world, second to the Grand Canyon. And I think from memory, it might actually be wider than the Grand Canyon, uh, but not as long. I'll show a plaque uh, towards the end of the video. There's a lookout back on the Castle Ray Highway up the, up the top here. Um, I'll pull up there and get a shot of the info board. But yeah, awesome spot. So just coming out for a, just a day trip. Uh, we're going to have a go to the Capity campgrounds. We're going to have a cup of tea, a bit of lunch, and um, yeah, just go for a drive. So thanks for watching. Cheers, guys. Nice 90 series Prado setup with the Ridge Rider rooftop tent up on top. He's got his little portable solar panels out there for a bit of, bit of sun. So this is the Capity River behind the mountains here. Not a lot of water in it at the moment. It's really dry up here, but go down and have a quick look, eh? Yeah, so here we are, guys. We're in the, uh, I think it's pronounced Kurunguba or Korunguba uh, campgrounds. It's in Glen Davis. Um, which is basically inside of the Capity Valley. So the Capity Valley is a, a large area up here, huge canyon. Uh, as you can see behind me, massive, massive stone escarpments. It's just absolutely spectacular. Um, you can see it up the back here. Just enormous sheer rock face. Um, goes right up, goes right up the river up here as well. Absolutely glorious spot. We've been out here well, once or twice before but not actually camped here so we're thinking we might stay out here one time as well. The old river as you can see is quite a bit lower than what it was last time we were here. Um, you can see right up there it's very low. Um, nice spot though we we came out here once before in the in the heat and the kids had a swim and we spent most of the day up here and yeah, it was really relaxing. Nice spot, nice clean sand and the, the creek goes a fair way. I think from memory I think from memory the kids went up that way a fair way last time um, and it obviously winds this is the Capity River not that you'd know it was a river at the moment but yeah this river runs pretty much right through the right down and through the valley which you can see the tops of either side so we've stopped just up the back here for lunch oh big goanna climbing up the, the embankment here um, chase up after this goanna and we'll have a look at him eh crikey style let's do it I'd say he's been lurking down here because old mate with the Prado's gone for a walk and he's no sooner left than the bloody Goanna's coming up. So if I can get up this embankment. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. There he is hiding, so yeah. Old mate's Prado set up here and he no sooner left. And you can see the Goanna here. Oh, there he is. Hey, little fella. Got a perla. How cool is that? You know why they just hang on with their big claws. That's so cool. Look at the colour in him. That is stunning. It's pretty quiet too. G'day mate. Hey. <laughs> he, hasn't, he hasn't seen the camera before, eh? Oh, that is so cool. Alright, we'll leave him alone. He's going to take off now. But I reckon he was coming up to check out if there's any food lurk, lurking around. That's so cool. 
So yeah, there's the 90 series with the rooftop tent and all. He's got his folding solar panel out. So yeah, you can see right up the back here, this huge escarpment, the sheer rock face. And then if you pan around up behind us as well, very similar valley uh, structure to the popular Nunes. Even up the top here, there's a, another sheer vertical wall up there. Yeah, very similar to the Nunes campgrounds, which a lot of people know about, so. Yeah, we'll have a bit more of a look around anyway. A bit more of the mountain background behind us there. Now this looks to be a free campsite as well. There's nowhere about uh, recording number plates or leaving change out. Basically you enter in via that end and you follow the track right down right down around the back there and there's drop toilets and all. So if anyone uh, you know, wants to camp where there's drop toilets, yeah, it's actually a really good spot up here. Definitely going to come up and camp here again soon. Maybe in a month or two we might do a run up and camp one weekend. So a couple of old remnants too. There's an old building, old building up the back here, some sort of structure. And on the way in, a few old chimneys. Looks like old remnants of old stone cottages at some stage. So you'll know, get a few shots of that too. Izzy's back. Oh, how cute. We thought we'd give him a uh, drink of milk just to wash the, <laughs> the choc chip cookies down. He seems to like Green's choc chip cookies. I'll have to bring some of them out next time. And you can't have cookies without milk, so he's... Um, Mandy's just popped the contained lid down full of milk and look at him, he's into it. It's happy hour at the milk bar. That's so cool. It's a beautiful pattern on them. You can't normally see it from the camera or from the footage, but he's about probably three foot away. Hang on, little fella, I'll tip the rest here. Come back. Here. Come back. Hey. Come back here. Here, look. Here. There you go, we'll tip it out. You might, you might be able to lap that last bit up. Who'd have thought, eh? Chop chip cookie seems to be their favourite food. <laughs> The life, eh? Sitting here in the bush, having a cuppa, watching the guy in the cruise around, sitting here with Mandy. Hey, Mandy. Hot coffee in the beautiful bush. Just a bit of information about this uh, this area generally. So we're in the Kurunguba uh, camp and picnic area. It's inside the Wollamai National Park um, here in the Kapiti Valley. Now, it's located on the banks of the Kapiti River um, and it's surrounded by these huge sandstone cliffs that you can see behind us. It's actually a really good camp area, uh, great spot for families and individuals if you just want to get away. It's not too far from Sydney. Um, now, there is a creek crossing back down on the main track, which it's dry at the moment, but um, they do warn that obviously four wheel drive and high clearance may be needed if there's a bit of water in there. Um, and there's a few spots that you can camp up on the other side if worse comes to the worst. But yeah, it's a really good spot. Um, Wallamai National Parks, the largest uh, of eight parks and reserves that make up over a million hectares of the Blue Mountains heritage area. So this one's 450,000 hectares. So yeah, massive area. Um, back in 2000, they added on to the Blue Mountains World Heritage uh, listings that there's 107 species of eucalypt gum trees, over 260 different native birds, which make up a third of Australia's total bird population, 52 different kinds of mammals, there's over 60 reptile species, 30 different amphibians. I didn't even know there was that many, to be honest, but yeah, apparently there's over 30 different amphibian species, and over 4,000 different types of moths and butterflies. So yeah, really spectacular spot, great place to camp, 
Um, fantastic day drive. There's plenty of spots all around here. Um, there is a, a pipeline walking track closed at the moment temporarily. I don't know why they, the signage didn't didn't really give too much info. Just said it's temporarily shut. But yeah, good spot to come out. Um, they they declared this area back in 1979. Um, and Wollamai National Park, actually the second largest conservation reserve in the state, uh, covers over 500,000 hectares. So um, it's it's quite a quite a significant area, or certainly one of the more significant national parks uh, in the heritage listed area. So yeah, great spot. As I said the, just the mountain the mountain views up the back here are just phenomenal. Like these these huge big sandstone escarpments, it's absolutely spectacular. So um, yeah, anyway, a bit of info. So if you're interested, come out and check it out. Um, plenty of free camp spots around here. Um, they've got information boards scattered, so it um, shows all the walking tracks and different spots, um, topographical references and all that sort of thing. So come and have a look anyway. Cheers, guys. So, so guys, oh, just picked up a hitchhiker. Get off. Bloody everywhere up here. You can hear them flicking and flying. Look at them all flying through the grass as you're walking. Yeah, as I was saying on the trip in, um, I missed one chimney further down the road here, but there's a couple of them along here. Um, obviously it's been an old, it's been an old homestead at some, some point, or you assume it, assuming it's a home. But how cool is that, the old, the old um, sandstock brick chimney. Must have been an old, just going quiet for a second, you can hear all the crickets. Or grasshoppers all through the grass here. Yeah, it's been an old, um, obviously been an old homestead house or something from years back. You can actually see up on the, you can see up here on the mortar where they've had a corrugated iron sheet up against it. Must have been the back of the house maybe, I'd say. Um, very similar to the huts down in the Victorian high country where they'd have the, the chimney and the fireplace almost fully external and then they build the house or the shed around it and use corrugated iron obviously so yeah I just love stuff like this when you look at it N-E-W-D-O-L-D or B-O-L-D-M-2 I'd do a bit of Google hunting and see what I can find but yeah, when you look, we're right out in the middle of this valley. Um, we've come out in an air-conditioned car. We've got the, the luxuries of a fridge in the back of the car. Um, we've got the latest tents and every 12-volt consumable uh, item that you can imagine. Everything to charge your phones, to your fridges, to your, to your gas cookers. Just about everything you can think of to make camping easy. And you get out here in these old places got to get a photo of it. Yeah, you get out here and all these old places you think years back, early settlers setting up out here. Imagine if someone just plonked you out here now and said, right, we're going to set up a house for you and you've got to live out here in the bush. It's just insane. Middle of nowhere, you're right down in this huge big valley. I just think it's, it just fascinates me that people lived out here and thrived and um, over the back here, you can't actually see it because there's a gate, but on the other side of the trees here, uh, some old shale ruins of the old shale works. Um, I think from memory, I could be wrong, uh, feel free to comment below, but from memory it's part of the oil shale company that you can see the ruins in back in Nunes, um, which is on the other side of the mountaintop. So a lot of the stuff there, when, when Nunes um, looked like it was closing down or downscaling, um, they moved a lot of the equipment from Newmans up into Glen Davis, or vice versa, I can't remember which way, but a lot of the machinery and that, um, from one town they moved to the other. Um, and yeah, up, up behind the trees here, there is remnants of it. You can do a tour, um, which I want to do one day. There's a, there's a tour that you can do and they take you through all the old buildings and the schools and everything up there. It's absolutely fascinating, back in the early 1900s. Um, but obviously they, you know, with all the environmental damage, running off shale and oil into the creeks and rivers. They used it to produce a lot of the um, paraffin wax uh, for candles and that sort of thing and we're exporting it all around the world but obviously they put a they put an end to that pretty quick smart and yeah packed up. 
uh, yeah, a bit of, bit of info, but check it out if you Google it. There's a lot of photos of the old ruins and absolutely fascinating. Crikey! So we're just heading back out and Mandy's spotted around the corner here on the fence post. Huge big bearded dragon. Yeah, massive one. So I'll spin the camera around. I'll try and get down as close to him as I can before he runs. Just to show you. Oh, he's got his head down. He's on the back of this post. I don't know if you can see him yet, but he's just behind this post. I don't want to, I don't want to scare him off until I get close enough. Size. How well camouflaged it is. Look at him. Little darling. He's going to flare up. I won't annoy him, but I'll get a photo of him. How awesome is that? It'll be two foot long, head to tail. So cool, just sitting out here chilling in the sun. I'll just film him from this side because he's uh, got the sun behind him. You may not see him. How cool is that? Same. I don't know how Mandy spotted him. So we've just come down this road into the Capity National Park and just spotted this awesome old truck. So cool and I'll just spin the camera around. Have a go at this. What a perler. I'm gonna stop and get a couple of still a couple of still photos of it too, but have a go at this old beast. God it's seen it's seen some use, hadn't it? That's so cool. Hey. Big crown wheel there on the ground. Oh, there's a clerk here. Oh, Headley Bly, keen bird watcher, 13th of February 1947 to the 26th of June 2018. That's sweet. It's like a memorial for him. Well, there you go, Headley. I appreciate your awesome old machinery here, mate. May you rest in peace. What a beautiful spot. How cool is that? <laughs> I don't know what sort of truck it is, to be honest. I'm not up. Not up on the old trucks, but looking at the cab shape, I'd say it's an early, quite an early model. It's a shame there's no, um, oh, here we go. Here's a, what do we got? Four speed, high auxiliary gearbox and low. How cool, how basic, eh? Look at that size of the handbrake you'd be battling to do a handbrake in that thing look at it bloody handbrake's five foot long that's so cool though you said I'd, I'm not into early trucks but I don't know I don't know what um it's got spark plugs so it was an early old petrol engine of some sort I think I'll, Oh, fuel tank up on there. That's so cool. Oh, 
That's insane. Looks like a ladder on the other side to climb up under. Fill it up. It's got the uh, BF Goodridge All Terrains. <laughs> That's so cool. All the timber on the back. Just thought I'd share that with you anyway, guys. I'll take a couple of happy snaps of it and be on our way. All the timber on the back all rotted out. So it's been here for a while. Pretty cool, eh? What a bugger. So we've driven all the way out here. Got here, Caperty National Park. And you can't even just do a day run here. You've actually got a ring, got a ring and book to get a four digit code to then put in to get through this gate. What's this say? Well, there you go. So you must have to pay even for a day trip in here. I'll ring uh, New South Wales uh, Parks Wildlife Service Mudgy 6370-9000. I'll give them a buzz on um, Monday and find out what the costs are and what the go is. But yeah, you put a put a four-digit pin in the bottom of the padlock there, and that gets you in. So what a shit! Got all the way out here and you can't get in. Not even for a day trip. Oh well, let's head back home. Here's another beardy on the road. Only a little one. Look at him. We might see if I can pick this little fella up, eh? I'll just have to pause it. Well, there you go, folks. I couldn't film it. I grabbed his tail and he took off. Where did he go? He took off up here. God, they're fast when they want to get moving. Bloody hell, they can run. Oh, well, I don't know where he went, but he's off the road at least. He's only little, only a young one. He shot up from there, ran up here, and disappeared. Oh, well, at least we got him off the road, saved him from getting squashed. That was cool. That's about the fourth, maybe fifth one we've seen, plus that big snake. Oh, another. Another day of adventure. Yeah, he took off. Here we go, guys. Here's another one on the road up here. We'll run back and... This one's a bit bigger. He spotted me coming, so he slinked down. Right on the bend of a corner. Look at this bugger. He's a good size. Look at that. so quiet out here. Oh no, there, there, there he goes. Ring here, ring here. Look at him go. Where did he go? He go around here. He's probably, there he is at the base of the tree. I'll scare him up the tree. Some people say you should leave him, but I'm in the premise that if I left him on the road, someone will come along in the shade there and not see him. So I'll, I'll touch him on the tail. And there he goes. He's on the tree. At least he's going to go up. Even if he came out an hour later and gets squashed, at least I don't know about it. But at the moment, at least I know I've managed to get him off the road. And where'd the little bugger go? Oh, there he is. Look. There he goes, folks. Look at him. That is so cool. There he is, up on the side of the tree. So, he's still climbing. So as I said, I'm around here so you can see him better. But as I said, um, I don't mind if he comes back out on the road, I'd hate him to get squashed, but if he comes out now, later, and gets squashed, there's not much I can do, at least I don't know about it. But when we drive past and we see him on the road, he's about the fourth one that we've passed that we couldn't stop for, because they're on a bend. And generally, lizards of that size are, you know, a couple of years old at least. So I just hate it when they get to that size and then they get bloody squashed by a car. So there he is there, guys, up on the tree. That's about as close as I can get. My selfie stick won't extend any further, but you can see him up there. Unreal camouflage. You wouldn't spot that otherwise. So 
another one off the road. <laughs> yeah, look, right here on the bend, car coming around the corner, wouldn't even see him. Only that my wife and I love them so much, we're always, always spotting them. But, um, yeah, out in the middle of the valley here, you, you wouldn't even see that on the road and you'd get squashed. So, another one off the road. <laughs> Made my day. Jump back in the car and keep going. See how many more we can rescue. So here's the Capity Valley lookout that I mentioned at the start of the clip. Absolutely spectacular this. This massive, massive valley as far as the eye can see now. There is an information board here which I was gonna I was gonna film and take a photo of so everyone can see the info. But naturally because some brain dead calf which decided to burn it, it does say at 30 kilometers wide. I'll just spin that around because because the wind might make it a bit hard, but you can just read it. It says at 30 kilometers wide, the Capity Valley purportedly is the world's second largest canyon. It's one kilometer wider than the Grand Canyon, but not quite as deep. There you go, America, we got one up on yours. Uh, adjoining the Wallamai National Parks, part of the greater Blue Mountains World Heritage Area to the east, and Gardens of Stone National Park to the south. That's a good spot, the Gardens of Stone, if you want to do some good four-wheel driving. Yeah, it says it also includes the Capity National Park within which is the historic Capity Homestead. Jeez, I'll have to go and check that out. We're going to come back up in uh, probably another maybe week or two and we're going to go and have a look at um, Glen Davis or Glen Alice. Uh, yeah, it does say, it's a bit hard to read as I said because some idiot set fire to it, but at 90 metres height, Pearson's lookout rises 627 metres from the lowest part of the valley floor. Now, the Pearson's lookout, if I can see it on this sign, so basically straight across there in the centre, I hope my finger's pointing at the right spot, but right across there in the centre is Gosford, 128 kilometres away. Uh, across to the right hand side, it's a little bit harder to see because these trees are in the way, but around the corner, straight across is uh, the Balbone Gap, that's 13 k's. There's some awesome tracks through there. You'll, you'll see them on YouTube, some pretty insane um, wheel lifts. That's off Walgan Road. Uh, and then just around to the right a little bit further is Sydney, 136 k's. You've got Nunes across here, that's 22 kilometres away, looking, looking across there east. Uh, Newcastle, Newcastle is literally where that V-shaped valley is, it's Newcastle, 168 k's, and then you've got the oil shale ruins and and the uh, Turin Guba where we were this morning. That's just to the left, a little bit near the peak. Um, and then there's a couple of other mountains, Mount Kenobla, that's 828 meters. Gun Dunguru, Mount Mount Gun Dunguru, that's 789 meters, and then where that almost like a lion's head comes out the wall and then the flat down before the slippery dip section. Um, there's a bicentennial trail and Glen, Glen Alice uh, tucked around the corner there. That's 24k, so that's where we were today. Glen Alice, we didn't go right into the guts of Glen Alice, but it's around there. That point, the little bump, the little camel's back hump up on top of that flat section before the drop down, it's 940 metres. And then, yeah, around to the left where where the flat section goes across and then just starts to rise up there. Um, that's the early village where there's some more ruins and further around is Tobain village with even more ruins around there. Um, and just where that where that dip is actually is the early diamond mine. So on the track on the track that we came down there's Mount Early which is the it's a property that um, rest his soul but um, everyone knows him, old Cole. Um, he had a place there and he passed away I think it was the middle to late last year. Um, beautiful old guy. People used to go into his property to go the Mount Early track, which was an insane four-wheel drive track, but he'd happily have a couple with you and 
let you have a look around in the property at old planes and everything if you have a look here on, on YouTube you'll find videos of it uh, but yeah really nice guy had the, all the time in the world for anyone that came in uh, but sadly as I say rest his soul he, he passed away we lost a, a great last year so uh, but yeah a bit of info on the on the board here some rare plants of capity um, so there's there's a lot of areas up here that are regeneration and um, you know locked off which is fair enough there's a lot of uh, endangered fauna and rare plants up here so but yeah just thought I'd uh, thought I'd show you that lookout anyway before we go home so there you go just thought I'd stop and show you is this old train station it's bloody awesome just thought I'd stop and show you is this old train station we pass it all the time when we come up here but haven't actually stopped at it before it's awesome I love it So cool. I don't know when they I don't know when they actually closed it down. Um, it used to be it used to be all locked up but obviously people have got in here now and uh, looks like maybe squatters have been in here. I'll have to uh, I'll do some googling and see you know, all, the, all the pigeon poo where the pigeons have been in here. I'll do a bit of Google hunting and see if I can find a bit of info when it actually closed down, but I'd say it would have been an original, original old, um, maybe the train marks. Oh, geez, the floor's a bit dodgy. Might have been, look at that, the whole floor. Yeah, it might have been the train master's cabin originally, um, the way it's got the chimney and all, I'd say it would have been a house at some point, but... Yeah. I just I hate it when I when I see beautiful old buildings like this just left to ruins and getting wrecked like it's got graffiti in there and it's, it's obviously quite an old building but um, yeah, it's just been left to go to waste out here obviously it's may not be a train station that they stop at anymore but still pretty cool and just behind us just behind us here um, Near the, near the road signs there showing the corner um, there's a track in there that's the Gardens of Stone National Park you follow that track in and if you go through that track uh, that's through Balbone Gap and it's quite a long long drive but if you go through there it's a bit hardcore in a few spots that will actually bring you out uh, brings you out down on Walgan Road and if you cross the road onto the other side then you can do Blackfellows Hand Trail and that takes you right through top of the hill and you pop out at the zigzag railway so that's a really good day trip even two days you can camp along the way so yeah anyway thanks heaps for watching guys make sure you hit the notification bell um, so you know when new content's up and be sure to hit like and subscribe and that way i'm inspired to keep bringing you videos cheers